So now it's my great pleasure uh, to introduce um, Minister Heather Humphreys, uh, who is uh, visiting uh, from Ireland. We're very honored uh, to have an Irish government minister attend our symposium. Uh, the subject matter has spanned um, the Atlantic Ocean, and so I would like to invite uh, the, the minister is the, the Irish government minister for the arts. Uh, culture in the Gaeltacht, and uh, I'd like to uh, warmly welcome her uh, to MIT and ask her to uh, to make a few brief remarks. So, Minister, welcome. Thank you, Thank you, very, much. Much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You can speak, I believe, into this. That's okay. Okay, well, uh, first of all, uh, um, I just want to uh, say thank you very much for the invitation to be here. And I'm in good company with people from Cork. I'm here with President Murphy from uh, um, uh, UCC and a colleague of mine, uh, Deirdre Clune, who's uh, an MEP. Uh, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, as I say, it's great to be here. Although uh, George uh, Boole and, and Claude Shannon were separated by almost uh, a century, the results of their joint work has transformed the world and impacted on every living person. It's incredible to think that almost everything that requires electricity, your kettle, your iPad, is powered by what is now known as Boolean uh, algebra. As well as utterly changing lives, these two geniuses laid the foundations for the global ICT business, estimated to be worth four trillion dollars. And I'm so glad that UCC and MIT uh, are joining together to celebrate their remarkable achievements. And I hope that many fruitful conversations and collaborations will spring from today's symposium. And it's wonderful to see President Michael Murphy of UCC here today. He leads one of Ireland's most prestigious and successful universities. And it's no accident that uh, University College Cork, or Queen's College as it was then known, appointed George Boole as their first professor of mathematics in 1849. UCC uh, has a long history of independent thought. The university nurtures a spirit of inquiry and creates an environment where the curiosity of students and researchers can thrive. And indeed, Ireland as a whole is a nation where curious minds live, learn and discover. And some locally would call it even nosy. <laughs> Known as the land of famous writers, actors and musicians, this spirit of creativity and imagination is also reflected strongly in our inventors and scientists. And Ireland has a rich scientific heritage that has helped shape the modern world. Newgrange is the world, or sorry, Newgrange is the world's oldest astronomical observatory, dating back to 3150 BC. County Waterford born Robert Boyle, known as the father of chemistry, is famous for Boyle's Law. In 1951, Ernest Walton was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for his work in splitting the nucleus of the atom. And just last year, Irish scientist uh, William C. Campbell won the Nobel Prize in Medicine. So this spirit of uh, innovation and creativity is very much part of modern Ireland's economy and society. Ireland has a growing reputation for scientific excellence. And key to our excess, a success are the 12 Science Foundation Ireland research centres established through an investment by government and industry. More than 200 companies are involved in uh, collaborations with these centres. Uh, the growing public and private investment in Irish scientific research will make a difference in people's lives, support industry investment and future-proof skills. When you consider how dynamic our education and research ecosystems are, it's not surprising that Ireland has developed into a vibrant start-up location. There has never been a better time to start a business in Ireland. And I would encourage all of the MIT innovators and entrepreneurs to look closely at Ireland uh, when you're thinking about establishing a European base. Startup activity 
is at a record high. Startup companies now account for over two thirds of all new jobs created in Ireland. Our state agency, Enterprise Ireland, is Europe's largest seed investor by number of investments. It is ranked third in the world among venture capital investors in seed funding rounds since 2010. Last year, Enterprise Ireland launched a new competitive start fund to support innovative export orientated businesses being uh, set up and led by female entrepreneurs. This is part of Enterprise Ireland's uh, uh, strategy of targeting all sources of founders, including young ent entrepreneurs, research-based uh, startups and businesswomen. Many global companies have already made the move. More than 3,300 foreign-owned companies have put down roots in Ireland. There are many reasons why they choose Ireland. We have a strong pool of highly skilled multilingual workers. We are the only English speaking country in the Eurozone providing barrier free access to EU market of over 500 million uh, customers. Ireland is ranked first in the world for the availability of competent senior managers and also tops world rankings for the flexibility and adaptability of our workforce and openness to foreign ideas. 40% of the population is under 29, giving us the youngest population in the EU. Our education system ranks in the top 10 in the world and over 50,000, sorry, over 50% of Irish 30 to 40, uh, 30 to 34 year olds have a third level degree higher than any other country in the EU. Ireland offers a pro-business environment together with a stable and competitive cooperation tax regime and strong incentives for research and development. And Ireland has maintained its position as the best country in the Eurozone for doing business. In the Forbes magazine rankings in 2015, coming an overall fourth in the world. This ranking is testament to Ireland's favourable business climate and regulatory um, uh, climate. So it's not surprising, therefore, that Ireland is home to nine of the top U 10 US technology companies, all of the top 10 born on the internet companies, nine of the top 10 global pharmaceutical firms, and 15 of the 20 top global medical technology companies. Uh, technologies companies. And finally, given that I'm speaking in MIT, allow me also to tell you why Ireland wants to attract the world's top tech talent to our shores. We employ over 80,000 people in ICT in Irish and foreign owned enterprises. Highly skilled tech talent is also needed in many other fast growing sectors such as international financial services and business services. In 2012, the government estimated that there would be more than 44,500 potential job openings for ICT professionals between 2013 and 2018. And that's an average of 8,000 jobs per year. And while we're working to meet that need from within our own education system, we wa also want Ireland to become the location of choice for those pursuing a career in technology. The government has started a new initiative in collaboration with industry to attract international talent to meet the growth in demand for high level ICT skills. And Ireland offers interesting, challenging and impactful work, a strong mix of innovative and leading edge companies to choose from, career mobility and diversity of roles, an inclusive and progressive workplace and society, good work life balance options and a rich contemporary and cultural experience. So I'd invite you all in the room today to consider studying or working in Ireland uh, or locating your business in Ireland. So ladies and gentlemen, let me finish, let me finish today by thanking you for your attention uh, and wishing you continued collaboration and success in the months and years ahead. Thank you.